All right, here we are as we continue along and keep chugging through RPG A Day 2022 on August 10th. We're going to take a look at when I started game mastering. This is one of those things that always I always have a good chuckle about when I watch YouTube videos of people discussing either when they did what, when they got started, when they did this in role playing games. Especially for people of my generation, uh, having started way back when, remembering the exact year, let alone the month, or as some people seem to remember the particular color of the sky that day, I don't know how they do it. All I can tell you is it was somewhere in middle school. So yes, much like the kids from Stranger Things, it was... D&D 1st Edition. I never ran any of the, the box games. I had them at the time. I remember having all the Beckme boxes. The basic, companion, expert, masters, and immortals. And I think a few times uh, I may have ran one of those games, but... For the most part, 99% of anything that we that I played, well, 99% is not exactly that accurate, is it? It's probably more like about 80%. 20% of the games that I had gotten involved in were, from a player's perspective, were some ver some edition of the Beckme rules. The game that I ran was first edition D&D, because I remember having the player's handbook, MM1, MM2, DDs and Demigods, Fiend Folio, The Dungeon Master's Guide, uh, Unearthed Arcana, and those were the primary hardback books that we had. Then later on came The Wilderness Guide, then The Dungeoneer's Guide. Uh, you know, I remember those core rule books, and to this day, uh, I, I still love a lot about how those books were done. They might not have been the best edited, they might not have been the best laid out, but being the initial run and the opening gambit of the evolution of D&D, first edition both complicated and clarified at the same time. It was a confusing mess of poorly edited or laid out or uh, desperate information related to each other scattered in various different areas across the books. It was nice to have like the DMG and the player's guide separate because if you were never going to run a game, it was nice to just be able to pick up the player's book and just have that. If you were going to be running games later on, you could pick up the DMG because all you really needed to play was the player's handbook. You didn't really necessarily need the Wilderness Survival Guide. You didn't really need the Dungeoneer's Guide. Uh, and you definitely didn't need Monster's Manuals if you were just playing. If you were a collector, sure. Uh, my exact age when I started playing, don't really know. Uh, and my exact age or time when I actually started running, don't really know. I do remember that it was at a friend's house where there was four of us there. And I was running at the time, and I kind of, from that moment on, became the forever DMG, the, the Dungeon Master. So, in the long storied history of me playing role-playing games, I've probably played 10% over my hobby lifetime so far, and ran the other 90. So, it, it, it helps you to get a chance to play and definitely helps put a, a perspective on being the game master. But no matter where you are in this journey, whether you're starting out and you've only played a couple of times and you've got this itch to run a game, I'd say do it. The only way you're ever gonna get better at running a game is to run a bunch of games and have a bunch of games suck, have a bunch of questions that went unanswered, have a bunch of things that went wrong, have a bunch of things that were never answered in the books. And trying to figure that out from an early age for a middle schooler, uh, 
borderline going into high school probably was a lot it was a challenge uh, I can't look back on some of that time and remember anything in specific uh, there were a few pieces that I do remember from uh, the Hill Giant series there were a few pieces that I remember of running the uh, Keep on the Borderlands, Palace of the Silver Princes, the Forbidden City. I'm trying to remember what else. Vault of the Drow, Through the Looking Glass. So I'm kind of getting dated here on what the type of modules and adventures I ran. So back then it was running a lot of modules. Uh, the idea or the concept of actually just doing everything from scratch and building a world at that time was not even something I was willing to undertake or had really entered in my mind. Uh, I did certainly pick and borrow and steal from books that I was reading at the time. Uh, the Black Company, of course, Tolkien, uh, Dragons of Pern, various things like that. Uh, and no, I never did read Jack Vance's books, and I'm not really that interested in reading it. But doing that side of the screen, working that side of the screen, uh, is worthwhile. Uh, you get to do some planning in, in, in many ways, get to exercise a lot of creativity. A lot of people don't consider it playing because you don't quote unquote have a character you're playing. Your character is the world, so you've got a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff for you to keep track of, especially if you're a very regimented GM, like you're doing torches and calculating how long the group has been in a dungeon or whatever it is they got going on at that time. But that's really about it. Middle school, somewhere in there, you know, don't exactly know. I remember it was first edition D&D and that's about it. Nothing specific. I don't remember the color of the sky, whether it was raining that day. I don't remember the month, uh, whether it was winter or summer or spring. I just remember that we got out there and had a good time. And I took a risk in running in games and fell in love with it. Here I am, still doing it to this day. So if you're not GMing, give it a whirl. You never know. It's not as hard as you think. So as always, play more games. Be good to each other. Get out there and have some fun.